Hello there, I'm back. Believe it or not, this is two hours later from when I was last on camera because started to machine this piece and four times the machine's gone into emergency mode. And I've had an emergency um, message come up in Mac 3 saying, lost communication with external device. I'm <laughs> so I did I've been doing quite a bit of fault finding and um, nothing wrong with the USB cable nothing wrong with the Mac 3 CAD that I can that I can see but still this message comes up after a few minutes of, of runtime well by accident I've just found out what the problem is <laughs> I've never heard of it before. I'm just going to go and switch the the coolant pump on for this, which is external of the machine, and just have a listen. Listen to what Mark Three says about it. A few seconds after I turn it on. Voila! And the message reads. <laughs> External, <laughs> external device not responding. What the hell's got that got to do with the water pump? I'll just show you. I'll take you here to Mark 3 and zoom you in a bit. Puts it into emergency mode. That just shouldn't happen because it gets its power from the computer, that the CAD inside the machine gets its power from the computer. The computer is, is seeing it. Uh, so the only thing I can put it down to, oh, the only thing I can put it down to is that there is a fault in the pump that's leaking power through the water and through into this and it's getting some sort of back feed so it looks like I've got to get a new pump well I, I've never heard of that before but that's that's my finding so I I will have to come back to this uh, this job because uh, yeah. Oh well, see here we go. And this is one of the reasons why I have all my machines on wheels because this is 300 kilos or more, so I can just catch hold of it and move it out. I don't suppose you often get to see the backside, or the you know, insert through the back of these machines. But let's just clean some of the dust and debris off it. I don't want to get that in the water, in the coolant. And it is coolant too. It's um, I always mix um, ethylene glycol. Not only to stop the water from freezing, but to stop any corrosion inside the spindle because the spindle is made up of stainless steel and aluminium parts inside it, inside the, the, the coolant galleries there. So um, to stop any anything like that, I put um, ethylene glycol or such like in there. So. This is the coolant pump. Okay. And it's an industrial size um, fish tank. Well, I'm not going to mess around with the damn thing. It's obviously got a 
an electrical leak into the water. It can't be trusted. But I've had it, um, what, three and a half, four years? Something like that, so there you go. Uh, it's an 80 watt, 240 volt AC. I know what I'm going to do with this. So the only thing you can do with something like this is save that bit of the wire, take your fitting out of it, because you'll need that for a new one. I don't think this one can be repaired at all, not to be trusted anyway. But um, there you go. The only thing you can do with them, and I would probably recommend now, now this has happened to me, is every three years, change your water pump. And this one now is only good for the bin. Okay, so I'm going to have to go down to my local aquatic shop and purchase a new one. Voila! New pump! Okay, with uh, a mountain of fittings and a new pump. Well, this one's 60 watts, not 80 watts. But I don't think that really matters. It's still a high volume pump. Maximum head is 2.8 meters, only 3 meters. So, you know, as high as the roof here, it'll pump up to, which is fine for what I, I want. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this one back in. I'm hoping it's the same thread. Okay. So, um, I actually found a fit in that I didn't know I had and uh, fitted in there perfectly. A little bit of a makeshift uh, connection here, but I didn't have a, a, a Jubilee clip to uh, go on here, pipe clip. But, you know, it's fairly low pressure and this is fine. So now, We'll submerge it in the coolant, like so. It's got rubber stuck, rubber. It's got rubber suckers on the bottom to stop it floating around. Because if it goes up against the side here, it vibrates and makes a hell of a noise. Okay, this is the return back from the the spindle, the router head. So let's see if we got a flow. Might take a minute or two to come through. Let's plug it in. Oh, this one's really pumping it through. It's got quite a way to pump it. There we go. You see that? Because it's a, a narrow ball, uh, it takes quite a bit for a pump to push through this pipe and there's probably could be 8 to 10 meters of this that is going to go through the body of the, the then it's going to go through the body of the spindle you know the actual rotor motor so we're happy that's working it's quite a bit quieter than the other one too. Okay, so we're going to put the lid back on now.
that sounded good. <laughs> okay, now for the big test. Pumps on. Max 3 doesn't see a problem. Max 3 Curdy's flashing inside. Here's the next big test. What do you know? I think the problem's fixed. Hopefully, it is. Okay, reset the zeros now and see if this will cut. 